Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to pip install packages in AWS Lambda Functions with a very simple technique. For those of you who probably found this video online when you're searching how to do this, you're probably surprised to find out that it's not entirely straightforward to get pip packages into your Lambdas. However, there are many methods to do so, one of which I will be showing you in this video. And I'll be showing you a method in this tutorial that is more geared towards simple projects and packages in pip. The premise of what we will be doing in this tutorial is that we will simply use the pip command itself within the Lambda function using OS commands in Python, and then we will zip our package and save it to an S3 bucket. And finally, after that, we will create a Lambda layer to use the zipped package in our project. So it's a very simple technique compared to the other stuff. However, it does have some drawbacks, which I will discuss in this video. And in the next video, I will even show a more sophisticated, complex, but significantly more robust method using Docker, if you guys are interested. So let me know in the comment section down below. Despite that, I think this is a really powerful technique I'm about to show you because it's generally a cool hack that can find a lot of use for simple projects and you will definitely learn some things and find use with your Lambdas. So before we get into it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. And enough being said, let's get started. Okay, so getting started here, I'm already in my AWS console in the preferred region, which is US East 2. And so I'm going to show you the Lambda function I would like to run that has a third-party package. So you can see I just went to the Lambda service within AWS, and I just went to the function section here, and I just already created this test function in Python 3.12. So if you're watching this video, you can easily just create, or you probably already have an existing Lambda function that uses some third party package. This is just a dummy function that does uh, something with a JWT package. This is actually a package required to be pip installed. So it is a third party package. And I'm using this JSON package as well within this code, which is a uh, Python standard. So that is fine. However, if I go to run this code, by the way, this code just simply encodes a secret in JWT and decodes it. If I go to actually test this code and invoke the test, what I'll find right away is that there's no module named JWT. So I have to pip install this package. So we're going to pip install this package in this video as we discussed. So in order to do that, we're gonna use something called layers within lambdas. So if you go down here, eventually we're just going to add a layer which has the pip package itself. And once we add that layer, will be able to run this code because it'll be able to access the package from the layer. So the question is, how do we get the pip package to that layer? Well, the first step is we just want to go back and actually create another Lambda function. So let's go here and let's create a function. So we're actually going to pip install within another Lambda function. And I know it seems kind of counterintuitive, but this technique does work and it's kind of a hack. So let's just go here and we'll call it pip install and we are just going to do python 3.12 and we want this architecture here because we want to make sure we're matching architectures with our other lambda functions that we're running so if you are using arm 64 in in your other lambda functions you want you want to switch this because depending on the nature of how we pip install it actually pip installs packages per that architecture so we're going to pip install on this architecture so you want to make sure you have um, synchronous architecture across your lambdas with your pip packages, and we just want to create the function. So I'm just going to give that a moment to create, and we'll jump into it once that is created. Okay, so now that we have our Lambda created, we just want to go down into the code section. I'm just going to copy and paste some code I already have that was working before. So I'll just paste it here, and you could just pretty much copy this code. I'll link it down in the description below. You can thank me later for that, but this is pretty much all the code we need with some modifications based on your packages to actually do this. So once we have that in there, let's just go ahead and just deploy it real quick. And another thing we want to do is before we start walking through the code is we actually have to bump the allocation within the configuration. So we want to allocate the maximum amount of memory and the maximum amount of ephemeral storage for our pip packages because we are saving to the ephemeral storage uh, temporarily before we upload to S3. And we want to maximize the timeout because some packages take a little bit to install. So actually the maximum timeout is 15, but we could just allocate 10, that should be fine here. And we are just going to save that. So you do need to bump these because a lot of the packages you, you will run into memory or ephemeral storage issues. So once that is updated, let's just go back to the code. Okay, 
You could see that overall it's a very simple code, only about 50 lines of code. And so we are just using some native Python uh, standard libraries and the Boto3 SDK to upload to S3. And so what's going on in this function at a high level is we are specifying the packages we want. You can specify more than one package at a time, but it is my suggestion to install one at a time because you will uh, run into higher chances of running out of memory or ephemeral storage. So I'm just specifying pyjwt here. Okay, so we specify the package we want. We specify the bucket name, which we will have to create in a second here. So this is just a bucket within S3, which is uh, one of Amazon's uh, storage services. So we will go to S3 and create this bucket. And we're just going to define the object key here. So you can define this whatever you want. I am just going to call it Python package pyjwt because that is the package I am installing. And then we are just going to uh, map out the directory we want to save to. So this is within the ephemeral storage. So we have to specify the temp directory because this is the only dynamic directory we can work with when we are running our lambdas. Hence, this is the hack. So we are saving our Python package to that, to that directory and we are specifying the path like this because this is what Python expects when it is looking for pip packages, this directory structure. And we are doing Python 3.12 because we are using Python 3.12. So if you are using a lesser version of Python, please be sure to keep that in mind. And finally, we just make the directory and we call this sub process within Python. So we can use the sub process library as you saw we defined there to actually pip install the package with this pip install command, which is pretty cool. And we could just save it to that package directory. Okay, and it just loops through all the packages. I only have one package here. And finally, it just zips it. So we wanna zip it, we wanna compress it just to uh, save storage. Okay. And also the, the layer itself actually expects a zip file, so we do actually have to zip it. And then finally, once we zip it, we just want to upload to S3. So that's what we're doing at a high level here. So as I mentioned, we ha actually have to do a couple things before we can run this code. So we have to create this pip packages zip files bucket. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me just uh, command C this package and go to the S3 service. Okay. So we'll come back to this in a second here. And for, if you've never used S3, don't be intimidated. It's actually one of Amazon's most popular services. It's essentially a file service system in the cloud. So we just uh, put the bucket name, pip packages zip files, and we don't have to play with any of the settings. And we could just go ahead and create the bucket. Let's just make sure it's within the same region. So we want it in US East 2, so good, because that's where the Lambda function is. And we just want to create the bucket. So we can see that the bucket is created. So let's go back to the Lambda. There's actually one thing we have to do as well. So if we go back to that Lambda function and we go back to pip install and we go to the configuration and we want to actually find the, the name of the, the role here for this guy. So actually we can just go to, instead of going to find the role here, we can just go to IAM. Because one thing you have to do is when you're saving to S3 buckets from lambdas, you actually have to increase the permissions of the, the lambda role. So when you actually create a lambda function, it has a role with some policies. So we just wanna go here to roles. And when you created that lambda function, it created a role. So if you just scroll down, it's the name of your Lambda function, pip install role with some random letters and digits. So we can see that's the one we just created. So let's go ahead and click that. And we want to actually add a permission to that role so it can actually save into that bucket. So let's go ahead and attach a policy and just search S3 and just give that Lambda uh, full access to S3 so it could save into that bucket and that should be good. So we're good to go in terms of the role with for that Lambda. So we can actually go back now and we have everything in terms of the setup to actually save that pip install package to that S3 bucket. So hopefully fingers crossed, things tend to break in YouTube videos for some reason when I go ahead and demo, as we all know. So we're just gonna go ahead and run this code. So test it. You don't really have to put anything for the invocation. So successfully installed, zipped, and uploaded package to S3. So that is awesome. So let's go to that S3 bucket again. So that was pretty quick because this, this package is really small. 
So let's go back to S3. So we just ran that code. Thankfully, it was a light package. And we could just go to this pip package's zip files. And within it is this Python package py jwt. Okay, so now that we see this Python package within our S3 bucket, which is great news, simply what we could do is we could just select the package and download it. So it is a very light package, surprisingly 65 kilobytes when zipped. Hopefully you are that lucky and you have light packages. Okay, so now that you have that package downloaded, the next thing we want to do is we just want to go back to our Lambda service. We are navigating back and forth between a lot of services, so I hope you're not overwhelmed. And this time, instead of going to functions, we're just going to create a layer with that zipped package. So we could just go here and create a layer. And this layer will give the, the Lambda function the capability to actually access that Python package within its compatible architecture. So let's just go ahead and type pip layer pi jwt. You can name it whatever you like as usual. We just want to upload a zip file. Also, you can upload straight from an S3 bucket, which is cool. So maybe I didn't have to go ahead and download it. I would just go ahead and select it here. And we just want to select the compatible architecture, which as we mentioned is this guy right here. Be sure to be synchronous with that as we mentioned. And we want to select the Python. So we are using Python 3.12. Be sure to be synchronous with that as well. So we just want to go ahead and create this layer. Very simple. It should be quick because it's such a light package, thankfully. Okay. So once we have that layer created, what we want to do next is we just want to go back to Lambda and we want to go to functions and we want to go to that original function that needed that JWT library. So that's that test function we created. And let's just go down here and we want to actually add a layer and we're going to select a custom layer. Mind you, AWS does actually have other layers. They even have a pandas layer. So if you do need pandas, you don't even have to follow this tutorial. You could just go ahead and select their pandas layer. But for JWT, we do need that custom layer. And we're just going to do pip layer pi JWT. And we're going to select the version, which is the latest version we just uploaded to that layer. And we are going to add it. Very simple. Thankfully, AWS with those integrated services makes it nice. It finds it for us. And we just want to go ahead and run this code. So remember before when we ran the code, it threw us a package not found error. Hopefully now after installing that PI JWT, we will get a success uh, code of 200 and it will show us the encoded and decoded uh, JWT token. So let's go ahead and run this code. So fingers crossed. Once again, things always break in YouTube videos. Okay, awesome. So it does look like we pip installed that package correctly. And hopefully the same goes for you as well. You were able to do this and get that status code and get past that error for uh, pip installing or not having those packages. Okay, so that sums it up, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and you were able to get your pip packages onto your Lambda functions and working. If not, let me know in the comment section down below. Once again, I do want to iterate the drawbacks of using this technique, which you may have ran into if you followed this tutorial. And that is we are limited based on the structure of Lambda functions with how much memory and ephemeral storage we actually have to work with. So there are packages, typically more complex packages, more machine learning packages that we can't pip install straight from the Lambda function. However, in a lot of the cases, this technique does work and you are able to simply pip install with a Lambda function and just zip it to a layer and get it to work. Probably one of the more simple techniques for doing this sort of thing. Uh, despite that, I think you guys probably learned something from this video. Once again, let me know in the comment section down below if you did as well. Stay tuned for future videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel and let me know what you want to see. If you are interested in that more sophisticated method where I show how to do this with Docker, let me know in the comment section down below because that will be a much more involved video. Probably a 30 minute plus video where I'll walk you how to set up Docker, how to create Docker images and pip install in Docker and upload those Docker images to ECR, which is another Amazon service which we can use to do more sophisticated things and work with more complicated packages stay tuned thanks for watching and take it easy everyone